the trumpets. Shabbat Shalom everyone. Shabbat Shalom. It is a feast day, the feast of the blowing of the trumpets. In the Hebrew, uh, Moed is the word for feast. Ed is uh, something, is, De means the right, and De also means continuous, because these feasts are a memorial for generations. Moed, Zakwarono, Zakwa, Za means to answer or to remember because when one speaks one who responds right. and to answer well qua means to make well to bring to a good condition so it's answering well za quarono terua te means to to dance to celebrate to like have a a great joy and everybody making a bunch of noise terua so za quarono terua today is the feast of trumpets yes. and uh we give ahaya ashre ahaya all praise Tobe Ahaya, as we would say, To is the word for praise. In the, in the Hebrew scriptures, you see the word good when he saw everything and it was good. That word good is Tobe. And we use it today to say praise because it's praise is good. <laughs> so Tobe Ahaya. Tobe Ahaya. All the day long. And Halololo Ahaya. Halololo Yoya. We give praise Ahaya. Shere Ahaya. Give thanks to the great king for what he has done to give us the opportunity to live. Bring us back into the remembrance of the feast days. That's right. You know, as you can see, we're far gone from the days of our fathers knowing how to blow trumpets. So <laughs> bear with us as we're trying to learn again. Learn. Yeah, man. We both played the trombone and we can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I had those. We are thankful to, to have this opportunity to be doing something. We're blowing on his frequency. Yeah. Praise <laughs> Ahaya. So, we're glad to see you all. Today, we're going to look at the heavenly feast of Ahaya. Because all his feasts are celebrated in the heavens by his angels, as we looked at with the Shabbat, day the angels keep it, and the other feasts written on the heavenly tablets. So, we're going to do an overview today, just running through all the feasts of Ahaya. And then, at another segment, we'll go more in depth on each feast so we can understand the meanings behind them and what the events and whatnot that transpired to bring about the feast and its enactments here in the earth even though it was already being done in the heavens and we, it was finally revealed to us here in the earth i want to touch on that you just brought up something very key when we went to that on the feast of new moon okay 
All right, and we went through the council of uh, Nicaea mm -hmm. and how they changed specifically Osaka. Right. Specifically. It's interesting that taking us away from Osaka actually takes us away from Yache. So that's the whole, that was the whole, the whole thing of Osaka is the blood that was shed for the atonement of our sins. Mm. So it literally takes us away from Yache. And it, of course, it brings us unto whatever deity that is. It brings us unto Satan, right. the adversary, the, 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 the deity, the egg worship right. with the fertility deity. Right. So that we wouldn't have anybody to save us from our sins. Right. Let's start here. You have Isaiah 66, 22 and 23. Isaiah 66, verse 22. For at the new heaven and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith Ahiah, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Shabbat to another, Shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith Ahaya. He noticed that he said all flesh. So it's always nice to know we're all going to be doing it together. Ahaya be with us and prosper us. Let's look at the feast. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 23, verse 1. And Ahaya spake unto Mushi, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, Concerning the feast of Ahaya, which she shall proclaim to be holy convocation, even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done. Now that's interesting. From the first day of the calendar to the sixth day, work shall be done. All right? Continue. But the seventh day is the Shabbat of rest. <laughs> Just like the calendar shows. Right. So the Shabbat that day is the first feast. Shabbat that day is greater than all the feasts. He said it is holiest of all days. All right? You shall do no work therein. It is the Shabbat of Ahaya in all your dwellings. These are the feasts of Ahaya. Even holy convocations, which he shall proclaim in their season. And there we see these are now the holy convocations, because the holy convocation is where everybody gathers together. Continue. Verse 5. In the fourteenth day of the first month, at even, is the highest Pesaka. There we go. Now we, we're from the seven day Shabbat. By the next seven day, that's the fourteenth day, we're at the Feast of Pesaka. Verse 6. And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto Ahaya. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. In the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. So that, that holy convocation, everybody gathers that first day. That will be the 15th of the first month. The Hebrew calendar is the, um, will be the first day of the week. All right? But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Ahiah seven days. In the seventh day is a holy convocation. He shall do no serve our work therein. And the highest spake unto Mushi, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. And he shall wave the sheaf before Ahiah to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Shabbat, the priest shall wave it. That time... And when we go into the teaching on Passover and the Feast of First Fruits, we'll be able to see it on the calendar as we, Ahaya has been gracious. He left the records to give us indication of when these times are. And remember, we don't have the temple to go offer it with the priests, right? Mm -hmm. And jump to 1516 uh, and then 21, please. On um, verse 15. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Shabbat, from the day that ye brought the sheep of the wave offering, seven Shabbat shall be complete. That's 49 days. Even until the morrow after the seventh Shabbat shall ye number 50 days. And ye shall offer a new meat offering unto Ahiah. And the 50, that's the Greek word, 50 is Pente. That's why in the New Testament is called Pentecost. Verse 21. And ye shall proclaim on the self same day that it may be in holy convocation unto you. You shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statute forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. And there we see these feasts are statutes forever. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. So that they were keeping that feast as well. Of course that's the verse for the Pentecost. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. 
And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. As the scripture said, it's a, it's a holy convocation. They had to gather. All right. So after first fruits, the next feast that will come will be the new moon. So we discussed the new moons in the last video. The new moon of summer, then new moon of fall. And then the first day of the seventh month is the Feast of Trumpets. Right. right? And Leviticus 23, verse 23. And the highest thing unto saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Shabbat, a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Ahiah. There's the feast of blowing of trumpets. And after blowing of trumpets is the day of atonement. And Ahiah spake unto Moshe, saying, Also on the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you. And ye shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto Ahiah. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. He shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Shabbat of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even. From evening until evening shall until you celebrate next, your Shabbat. From that ninth day when the sun goes down until the next even, which will be the whole tenth day. Then after the Day of Atonement, we have the Feast of Tabernacles. Yeah. Leviticus 23 and 33. Okay. And the higher speak unto Mushi, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month, shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto Ahiah. Mm -hmm. On the first day shall be in holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto Ahiah. On the eighth day shall be in holy convocation unto you. And you shall offer an offering made by fire unto Ahiah. It is a solemn assembly, and you shall do no servile work therein. Right? So it's an eight day feast. The first day is a holy convocation and the eighth day is a holy convocation. Both those days fall on the first day of the week. After tabernacles, we have the new moon of winter, which is the 31st day of the ninth month. That's when winter officially starts. And then, after winter, comes the feast of dedication. So the feast was started in the days of Antiochus the Greek, in the times of the Maccabees. In the book of First Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 52 to 59, please. Now on the five and twentieth day of the ninth month, which is called the month, Caslu. in the hundred forty and eighth year, they rose up betimes in the morning. And offered sacrifice according to the law upon the new altar of burnt offerings which they had made. Okay. Look at what time and what day the heathen had profaned it. Even in it was it dedicated with songs and cisterns and harp and cymbals. Then all the people fell upon their faces, worshiping and praising the Elohim of heaven, who had given them good success. And so they kept the dedication of the altar eight days and offered burnt offerings with gladness, and sacrificed the sacrifice of deliverance and praise. They decked also the forefront of the temple with crowns of gold and with shields, and the gates and the chambers they renewed and hanged doors upon them. Thus was there very great gladness among the people, for that the reproach of the heathen was put away. Moreover, Judas and his brethren, with the whole congregation of Israel, ordained, that the days of the dedication of the altar should be kept in their season from year to year by the space of eight days. Mm -hmm. From the five and twentieth day of the ninth month with mirth and gladness. So that's another feast, an eight day feast that we have from the five and twentieth day of the uh, ninth month that feast is kept. All right, can you read John 10 and 22? This feast of dedication 
And the New Testament confirms that this feast was also kept as well. Uh, John 10 and 22. And it was at Yorotavim, the feast of dedication, and it was winter. There we see right. confirmed the feast is in the winter time. That's right. Okay. All right. Now the next to last feast before the year ends, the Feast of Purim, which is also known as the Feast of Lots in the book of Esther, chapter 9. Esther, chapter 9, verse 20. And Mordecai wrote these things and sent, and sent letters unto all the Jews that were in all the provinces of the king, Ahasuerus, both nigh and far, to establish this among them, that they should keep the 14th day of the month of Adar. Right. And the 15th day of the same, yearly, as the days wherein the Jews rested from their enemies, and the month which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy, and from mourning into a good day, that they should make them days of feasting and joy, and of sending portions one to another in gifts to the poor. And the Jews undertook to do as they had begun, and as Mordecai had written unto them, because Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, the enemy of all the Jews, had devised against the Jews to destroy them, and had cast her, that is, the lot, to consume them and to destroy them. Wherefore they called these days Poroyim, so as it should not fail, that they would keep these two days according to their writing and according to their appointed time every year. So there we see it's appointed every year. And these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation, every family, every province, and every city. And that these days of Poroim should not fail from among the Jews, nor the memorial of them perish from their seed. So those are the feasts and the last feasts going according to the year will be the new moon feast of spring. That would have been the last feast of the year. Right. And there we have all the feasts that we have to keep. So, that's the overview. And uh, I'll be with us. We look forward to going into some more understanding of what I has ordained for us in his feast and understanding the memorials and what we're rehearsing. Yes. Oh, that's good. Tobaya. 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 All right. Shalom. Shalom.